Hello and welcome to Post to Post, the channel where we discuss all things hockey and all teams. Uh, this is a video I've actually been meaning to make for a long time now. Sprung it on you a little bit. Uh, earlier I told you what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to talk about bandwagon fans and what that actually means. I think it's a definition, or if you want to define it, I think people could define it differently. So I want to ask you, how would you define a bandwagon fan? Or what, what do you think that means? I think there are two kinds. There's the hockey fan who changes teams according to who's doing well. Mm -hmm. And then there's the local dweller of a city that has a hockey team that's suddenly doing well. And they're not really a hockey fan generally, but they've decided to hop on and be in the, be in the party. So there's the hockey fan bandwagoner that moves around the loyalty. Then there's a local person who becomes loyal to their team and then maybe fades away if things go south later on. Mm -hmm. So if, the, if, the, if that new hockey fan in your scenario uh, stayed a hockey fan, regardless of how the team did, they would just be a normal hockey fan and not Absolutely. a Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So only cheering for a team when it's, when it's doing good. Yeah. That's, that, that's the problem. There, there is some suspicion that Las Vegas is off to such a great start that the, they have raised the expectations so high that... In a year or two, if things don't keep on this incredibly high energy level, mm -hmm. that people will drift away. They would be, by this definition, a bandwagon fan. They're in for the beginning. Uh, it's all a big fun. And then next thing you know, they're toiling to make it into the playoffs next time or maybe don't make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And then the, the rink is half empty. That, that would be a terrible thing. I ho certainly hope that doesn't happen. And it's too early to assess whether all the fans in in the, uh, is it T-Mobile Arena? T-Mobile, yeah. Are in it for the long haul or not. Hopefully they are. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, think it'll be interesting like in, in a couple of years to see. Yep. Now, I've chosen five jerseys to hang up. You see Vegas here, which is something we've kind of already talked about. Their mm -hmm. success this year, obviously there's a lot of new fans because it's a new expansion team, but their success probably has something to do with the amount of fans. Mm -hmm. Nashville here, who came out of nowhere and went to the Stanley Cup Finals last year. Um, you could, couldn't, even, couldn't even buy Reebok, Reebok Nashville jerseys. Um, mm -hmm. as of round, at the end of round one of last year, they're sold out. Uh, that's the only team that was sold out. So there's a ton of new <clears throat> Nashville fans. And, um, I think they get a lot of some, some of their fans, like it's, it's the biggest insult in sports. It seems to call someone a bandwagon fan. And I'll get into my thoughts on that. But, mm -hmm. uh, that's the reason that those fans get that term sometimes. Now we have Chicago here, which 2010, they won. And then a couple years after that, they won again. And a couple years after that, they won again. Um, so three Stanley Cups, uh, it's a lot of new fans that came out of nowhere and a lot of fans that uh, maybe have drif drifted away. So there's been some bandwagon accusations as far as Chicago goes. Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh for the same reason. Yeah. Um, two they Cups were, recently. They were on the verge of leaving town <clears throat> until Sidney Crosby came along. Uh, yeah, they're all really? very close to bankruptcy. Yeah. Um, and then at the end, we have I'll uh, use that. Edmonton. And that's due to the McDavid factor. McDavid gets drafted by Edmonton. Everybody thinks that they're going to be the best team in the world because of McDavid. And they're all of a sudden um, an Edmonton fan. And they missed the playoffs this year. And they've kind of slid away. <laughs> here's my definition of a bandwagon fan. Or here's my thoughts of a bandwagon fan. I really don't care um, what your reason is to, as to why you cheer for a team. The fact that you are a longtime fan or a very new fan, um, the fact that you enjoy this sport and are willing to watch it, that's a plus in my book. So I really don't care what team you cheer for. The thing that bothers me, the only thing that bothers me, is when you have the, your first scenario of a person who has, uh, I don't know, they like a bunch of teams, but they... They only follow the team that's doing the best. So whatever team's doing the best that year, they follow that team or they support that team. To me, that's a bandwagon fan. Only supporting or supporting majority to the team that's doing the best. I don't really understand that mentality. Um, I have my favorite teams. I like Montreal Canadiens. I like the San Jose Sharks. I like the Dallas Stars. I like the Colorado Avalanche. I like the St. Louis Blues. Those are my top five. After that comes Carolina. Uh, my teams fluctuate as far as the teams that I like, and it doesn't really have anything to do with their success. Carolina shot up my list uh, at the beginning of this year, and they missed the playoffs. Like, it's not a team that's going to be contending for a Stanley Cup anytime soon. 
I just like the structure of the team. I like some of the players, yada, yada, yada. Um, St. Louis has never won a cup. <laughs> uh, yeah. Colorado hasn't won a cup since Patrick Waugh left, and they've been pretty abysmal other than this year, the little run there at the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dallas missed the playoffs this year. The one in 99, that was a very long time ago. Montreal hasn't won it since 93. San Jose Sharks has never won the cup. So uh, I think the, the teams that I cheer for are teams that I, I love. I really like the story of the team. I cheer for them when I was younger, or I like the players on the team. We have some people who only cheer for Chicago, Pittsburgh, and Vegas, like these teams that only do good. And see, that's, a, that's frustrating to me. I don't, I'm, I'm happy that those people like hockey. I think that's important, but it's not very unique mm-hmm. to only cheer for the team the teams that are doing the best. So uh, that's my thoughts on that. There are people who follow a player from place to place. So the Wayne Gretzky situation, when he went from uh, Edmonton to L.A., yes, probably a lot of fans not in the Edmonton market likely followed mm-hmm. him there because they wanted to keep yeah. cheering for... And then to St. Louis, and then to New York. And then to St. Louis, and then to New York. And, and he was very well liked in New York, and he was reunited with Messier. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that was a great story. Um, and the same thing with Crosby when he came into the league. Some people just cheered for Crosby. Yep. And regardless of what team he che- he went to, and they started to cheer for the team, and they've been fans of Pittsburgh ever since. Um, to me, that's not a bandwagon scenario. That's... No. You like the player, you're sticking with the player, you're sticking with the team, and uh, if he moves teams, then... Your loyalty goes with the player. I, and that's fine. that was very easily demonstrated when he was in the QMJHL mm-hmm. and played for the Rimouski Oceanic. <clears throat> People followed Crosby, not the Rimouski Oceanic. They couldn't give two, yeah. two shakes about exactly. what they did. Yeah. But when the Rimouski Oceanic would come here to Charlottetown, they would fill the rink Mm -hmm. for people who just wanted to see Sidney Crosby. Exactly. And not unlike one of the games we decided to go to this year was because Zadina was, or you decided to go, I guess I didn't go to that one, because Zadina was playing with Halifax Mm -hmm. and you wanted to see him play. Um, That's fine. Now, the interesting thing is people cheering for a team doesn't actually derive any benefit for that team. It doesn't, they don't get more money. There's no, they're not subscribing to the team in a Patreon kind of way. So someone cheering for a team actually has no effect on the universe overall. Uh, if I, I think financially they do. Do you think so? Nashville is a perfect example. There's so much Nashville merchandise that was sold. That team made bank last year just on merchandise. I know it goes to the NHL and stuff, but they get a, it's profit sharing and stuff, but mm-hmm. um the, I think, yeah, it's a total cu- culture to be a Nashville fan. Now. Well, if their support of the team goes so far as to buying <clears throat> merch and stuff, I agree. I agree. But people just changing their loyalties from one to the other. Yeah. Um, there's no overall effect on the time-space continuum. <laughs> so um, I really, I'm like you, I don't care why someone cheers for a particular team. It's I, totally I, a personal I preference. I, I think it's natural that somebody wants to cheer for the nearest team to their market. They grow up being exposed to that team on their local television. So that makes perfect sense, and that's probably as it should be. But it isn't always that way. For instance, you look at the New York metropolitan area. You've got New York Islanders, you've got the New York Rangers, and you've got the New Jersey Devils, all of which are in the same media market. Mm -hmm. And in baseball, you have the Yankees and the Mets, and you used to have the Dodgers and the Giants as well back 50 and 60, 70 years ago. And you've got people in New York that are huge Yankees fans, hate the Mets, mm-hmm. and vice versa. So and that's loyalty. The Jets and the Giants share a stadium, do they not? Uh, in the NFL? Do they in the NFL? Do they still? I'm not. They did last year. I did, I'm pretty sure yeah. they still do. Pretty sure they still do. But yeah. uh, regardless, it's all in that area, and mm-hmm. uh, that's how close they are. Anyway, they as, did share. As Canadians, um, it's usually very common here t- that most. Hockey fans in Canada will cheer. Their favorite team will be a Canadian team. That's just how it goes. There or are, Boston. Or Boston. In yeah. this end. In this, this, in this end. Of the There's country. a lot of Boston fans here. Yeah. Because of how close they are. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean that that's everyone's opinion. Um, no. Justin, for example, is a Pittsburgh Penguins fan. Mm-hmm. And there's some other people around here that I know who are uh, teams of other American teams or fans of other American teams. Sorry. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you don't have to cheer for the team that's closest to you geographically. Um, San Jose Sharks are my second favorite team. I'm the farthest away from the <laughs> San Jose Sharks. Uh, there's no other team that's farther away. Probably not. Unless they put a team in Alaska. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Honolulu. Yeah, Honolulu. Um, yeah, I, with me, of course, we, we even did a video long, long ago when this channel started about why I'm a Montreal fan. And it was instilled in me when I grew up. Uh, I was exposed to it, exposed to the players, exposed to the culture. And I'm still carrying that tradition on in my own soul. And I always will be a Montreal Canadiens fan forever. And I have amazing, not I don't have amazing anything, but I have uh, intense respect for Toronto Maple Leaf fans who have suffered for even longer than we have. It's been only 25 years since Montreal last won a cup. It's been double that since Toronto last won a cup. And I still see cars going around. Here in Prince Edward Island, we don't have to have a front license plate. That's part of the jurisdiction. So we can have any affinity on there you want. Mm -hmm. You want to have your front license plate being the NASA rocket formula or the uh, sports team, you can do that. And there's a lot of people driving around with Toronto Maple Leafs front plates still to this day, or the hats or the jackets. And they probably put up with a lot of ridicule from people. Absolutely. When they do that, but they're hanging in there and good for them. Mm -hmm. Because one day they will be rewarded. <clears throat> and it probably will be sooner rather than later the way things are going. Definitely, I agree. Yeah. Uh, so when I, I don't ever remember calling anyone a bandwagon. Or, like, to I me, it's not even an insult. I, don't, I, I just don't I, that's care. That's the thing. I don't really see it as an insult. You're, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're complaining that someone else is a fan of hockey. Like, I, I don't, I don't really understand. Who cares? Like, you should be celebrating the fact that they're actually watching hockey, and that hockey is growing as a culture in North America, and that yeah. the NHL is growing financially, and and the exposure is increasing and stuff. To to make fun of a fellow fan for yeah for liking hockey or for cheering for a certain team, just it's it's. It's it's making yourself. It's all about making yourself feel better, more yeah. so making the other person. And the you're, person you're legitimizing your reason for why you cheer for your team. It's the person who cheers yeah. for Tampa, or the person who cheers for Pittsburgh, <clears throat> or uh, another, let's say, a fairly new team like Nashville, they shouldn't have to justify or defend why they cheer for them, mm -hmm. especially when the team is doing well. It makes it harder for a longtime fan, because if I see a Toronto Maple Leafs license plate. Two years from now, when they're in the finals, let's say, I'm not going to assume that that person is suddenly a Toronto fan. Right. I'm going to assume that they're finally getting what they've been waiting for all their frigging lives. Exactly. Uh, but other people probably have to defend, like the Tampa Bay situation. I know when the Tampa won its first cup mm -hmm. with Brad Richards way mm -hmm. back in the day. I was told or I read somewhere that they had a parade and most of the town didn't know what the parade was for because it just wasn't a big thing mm -hmm. in the local media market. It was huge for those hockey fans that were there, but it didn't really catch the whole town at that point. Um, that's maybe different now. With media being so much a bigger piece of this, maybe it's bigger now. I hope it is. But people who cheer for teams like Pittsburgh, like like a Justin, I, for all I know, Justin's cheered for Pittsburgh all his life before he even yeah, heard he, of he, he was a big fan of Lemieux back in the day, so he, Justin's actually been a Pittsburgh fan uh, since the early 90s. There you go. So if Pittsburgh does well in the playoffs... Hopefully Justin doesn't have to defend to other people. Why would he? Why would he bother wasting his breath defending why he cheers for the team and saying, well, I don't cheer for them because they're doing well. I cheer for them all the time. I mean, when I first started the channel, Justin was a part of the channel. Yeah. He was called a bandwagon fan all the time in the comments. Yeah. For, I, if, I, mean, I don't get it. He shouldn't have to defend himself. It, it, shouldn't, yeah. it shouldn't matter. A, I don't get it that it's an insult. And B, I really don't care why yeah. someone cheers. As long as they're watching hockey, I'm, that's, I'm happy. See, that's what I call it. If you're a fan of any one of these teams and you're watching this video, I don't care your reason for cheering for these teams. The fact that you're watching this video, the fact that just you watch hockey in general, we can be friends for sure. That's all. That's, that's all I care about. But you're, you love the same sport I do. We can be friends. There you go. Perfect. Anything else to add on this topic? I, that's the best last statement right there. I'm not going to muddy it up <laughs> with anything from my mouth, so Sounds go good. for it. Uh, all right. Uh, thanks, for guys, for watching this video. Appreciate it. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button for more conversations just like this in the future. And we'll see you in the next one. Adios.